written by Clifford Goldsmith and starring Ezra Stone as Henry Aldrich. Brought to you by the puddings that are tops in taste. Jell-O pudding. Remember when you were in your teens? Well, when you listen to Henry Aldrich and his pals, we think you'll sort of be able to detect a little of yourself. For Henry Aldrich is a typical American boy from a typical American family. Just listen and see if I'm not right. It's noon in Centerville, and as the scene opens, Henry and his pal Dizzy Stevens are just coming down the stone steps of Central High School on their way to lunch. Well, Dizzy, what I want to know is where it could have gone. Listen, a, a lunchbox isn't something a person just overlooks. Well, you certainly overlooked yours. Oh, no, I didn't. Somebody took mine. And, boy, I didn't need any breakfast this morning. Can't you buy anything? How am I going to buy anything? The only thing I've got in my pockets is this knife. Gee whiz, Henry. You wouldn't like to sell that knife, would you? Oh, no. It's got two blades, a corkscrew, and a combined can opener and nail file. I'll give you 20 cents for it. No. I'll give you 30 cents. No. Say, Dizzy, I think I know who took my lunch. Yeah, who? Irwin Cooper, and and he's right over there. Hey, Irwin. I'll wait here. What do you have, Henry, my boy? Irwin, I don't like to insinuate anything, but you haven't by any chance seen my lunch, have you? What are you trying to do, kid me? Don't you have the locker next to mine? What if I have? Well, I remember distinctly when I put my lunchbox in my locker this morning, you were standing right by it. Go on. Now, wait, Irwin. Don't try to walk away. Irwin. Hey, Irwin. Hey, Henry. What do you think just happened to me? What? Do you remember Violet Hawkins? Who's she? The girl I always wanted a date with and never dared dream she'd even look at me. I don't know her. Sure you know her. She's the one that slapped me in the face the time I tied it to the desk. <laughs> Did she just slap you again? No. <laughs> Wait till I tell you. She just asked me to be a partner at the class picnic. She did? Sure. Who are you going with? Oh, I haven't asked anyone yet. You're not supposed to. You have to wait until a girl asks you. I do? Sure. Hasn't anyone asked you yet? Well, uh... I, I, I've been too busy for anyone to ask me. How could they even find me when I've been here, there, and everywhere looking for something? I found you. <laughs> Dizzy, do you happen to know the name of that girl in our class with blonde hair? With blonde hair? Yeah. That's the way half of them are. No, she, she's the one that when she speaks, it's in sort of a low voice. Oh! You know who I mean? No. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Dizzy. She wears high-heeled shoes, and Irwin Cooper is crazy about her. Oh, I think I know the one you mean. That darn girl, Henry. What's the matter with her? Boy, I wish she'd ask me to go to the picnic. Henry, do you realize what you're doing with that knife? What? You just cut your tie in two. <laughs> she whiz, and that was one of my best. Henry, you ought to sell that knife before you do some real serious damage. No. I'll give you 50 cents for it. Yeah? Yeah, with 50 cents, you can buy out the school cafeteria. <laughs> I'm hungry, but I'm not going to sell this knife. And besides, look. What is it? I just found 10 cents in my pocket. Are you sure that isn't mine? How would your dime get in my pants pocket? Well, I had a dime and change this morning. <laughs> He was busy. Stand in front of me, quick. What's the matter? Come on, let's go across the street to the Haven's Drugstore. How are you up, Dizzy? Hey, wait for me, Henry. Hey, hey somebody's calling you. It's Agnes Lawson. She ruins every lunch hour I have. Yeah, well, I'm going to leave you before she ruins mine. Dizzy, come back. Henry, 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 I, I want to ask you something. I'm busy, Agnes. But wait, Henry. What for? Henry, do you like fried chicken? Do I like what? Do you like peanut butter sandwiches? How many do you have? Do you like deviled eggs? Listen, Agnes, I'll take anything. Well, how would you like to take me to the picnic? You mean you haven't got any of those things with you? Of course I haven't. Would you like to be my partner, Henry? Well, the only thing is... Oh, has somebody else asked you? Well, 
Somebody asked me not to accept any offers until I see about something else. I love to put up a lunch, Henry. I just get the biggest kick out of it. Don't talk anymore about food, Agnes. Huh? I'm starved. The last class I had was in nutrition. Oh, gee, that's too bad, Henry. Gee whiz, I'm, I'm hungry enough to eat a well-balanced lunch. Say, Agnes, you know who that was that just went into the Havens drugstore there? Just now? Yeah, that girl with blonde hair and high-heeled shoes. Oh, come on, let's go in and see. Oh, oh I don't think you better go in, too. I'm going in to meet a couple of the fellows in here. Oh, you are? Well... Will you let me know about the picnic, Henry? Yeah, give me three days, Agnes. But if you'd rather not wait that long, I'll understand. Goodbye, Henry. Hey, Henry. Hiya, Homer. Henry, come over by this table a minute. What do you have? Do you know who that girl is sitting at the counter? Which one? The blonde with the blue eyes. Yeah, isn't she a beauty, though? You couldn't loan me a dime, could you? Well, that's, that's all I got myself, Homer. I'll pay you 25% interest. No, I've, I've got to go over to the counter and get my lunch. I saw her first, though, Henry. Yeah. What do you have? I, uh, I, I, I guess this young lady was here first. Oh, well, I haven't decided yet. Oh. Mister, is that baked ham there? Yes, sir. What's that next to it? Roast beef. Oh. What's this? Sliced chicken. Well, I'll take, uh, apple pie. Apple pie. A small piece. That's a nickel, isn't it? Yes, sir. Put a scoop of ice cream on it. Could I trouble you for a paper napkin, please? Oh, oh, sure. How many would you like? <laughs> Just one. Here, gee whiz. Take the whole container. <laughs> uh, do you want whipped cream on that pie? Well, No uh, extra charge. Shoot the works. Hey, uh... Not bad. That'll be 15 cents. Fifteen cents? Nickel for the pie, dime for the large ice cream. Yeah, well, uh, that's fair enough, only, uh, did I happen to order ice cream in the first place? You don't want this? Well, would it be an awful lot of trouble if I didn't take it? You mean I gotta dismantle this thing? <laughs> yeah, well, I- I'm afraid so. Listen, what do you want? Well, uh... Could I have the menu, please? Oh, sure. You wouldn't like a piece of apple pie on me, would you? Oh, I don't think I should. Well, uh, why not? Gee whiz, mister, one apple pie and, uh, I think I'll take the same. Just plain? Yes, sir, plain. Well, it certainly seems good to have spring here. Mm-hmm. I like spring. I like to go on picnics, too. You do? Yeah. Are you going to the class picnic? Oh, I... I'm not saying yet. Buddy, what's the idea of shaking pepper all around? (laughs) Gee whiz, mister, I didn't even know I had it in my hand. Would anyone mind if I should take ice cream or my pie? You want ice cream, too? Large or small? Well, I think I'll take, uh, small. (sighs) Not large? How about you, buddy? Well, as a matter of fact, I don't think I'll eat anything at all. (laughs) I must be hungrier than you. Yeah. Frankly, I was just going to eat to kill time, anyhow. Oh, could I have a chocolate malt or two? A chocolate malt? One chop! (laughs) Yes, sir. One chocolate malt. What is your name? My name's Henry Aldridge. Mm. My name's Geraldine Love. It is? Mm Mm-hmm. Gee whiz. Geraldine Love. (laughs) Who takes the check? Oh, I'll pay for it. I wonder... I wonder if... Who who are you looking for? I just thought there might be someone in here I know. Who? I uh, wonder whether there could be anyone outside looking for me. Would you mind excusing me for just a second while I step out? How about this check? I'll be right back. Dizzy? Hey, Dizzy. What do you have? Come here. I'm, I'm in a terrible position. What happened? Hurry up. Here's my knife. Give me that 50 cents. I haven't got 50 cents anymore. No? No, I've been getting something to eat. Haven't you anything? Just 30 cents. Well, gee whiz, that'll make 40 cents. Give it to me. Here's the knife. Oh, did you decide to eat after all? Only in a way I did. Well, here, gee, thanks. So So long. Yeah, I've got to go back in. Was anyone out in front? Who was there? And was it a good thing I saw him? That'll be uh, 20, 30, uh, 40 cents. Huh? Is that all? (laughs) 
Aren't you going to eat anything? Gee, if, if you could have seen the lunch I brought from home. Oh, you've already eaten? I, I stuffed myself. Hey, Henry! What do you have, Dizzy? Your mother's out here. My mother? Henry, dear, I've been looking all over for you. Is somebody sick, Mother? No, dear, you left your lunchbox at home in the living room. Mother. Well, dear, you can't go all day without anything to eat. But, Mother, I've had more than enough. I, I left that box home on purpose. Hi, Geraldine. Is that you in there? Oh, hello, Irwin. Listen, where did you come from, Irwin? Oh, I see you found your box, Henry. Now maybe you can eat something. Henry. Mother, do you mind if I change the subject for just a minute? I, I want you to meet Geraldine Love. Hello. Come on, Irwin. Let's go over to school. Okay. It was nice to have met you, Henry. She wish she's gone. Who is that young woman, Henry? She's the best-looking girl in school, Mother. She's hardly the best-mannered. But you don't really know her. And while I appreciate your bringing this lunchbox, I, I do think you could have handed it to me more cautiously. Henry, Agnes Lawson's mother phoned this morning. Well? She said I wanted to know whether you wouldn't like to go to the class picnic with Agnes. I hope you didn't tell her I would. Well, why wouldn't you, dear? Mother, I couldn't possibly. Why not? Because. Henry, there isn't any girl you know quite as nice as Agnes. But, Mother, she can't begin to compare with Geraldine. I'm sure she isn't as rude as that young woman. You're just jumping at conclusions. Henry, Agnes's mother has always been so nice to you. And so is Agnes. But she's still not my idea of a girl I'd like to go on a picnic with. Then I don't think you should accept any more of her hospitality. Henry, say, Henry, aren't you going to be late to class? Oh, hello, Agnes. Oh, hello, Mrs. Aldrich. The last bell may ring any minute, Henry. Well, there's still lots of time, Agnes. Henry, don't you think this would be a good time to tell Agnes what we were just discussing? But, Mother, look at the clock. I didn't know it was so late. It won't take one minute. What is it about? Well, Agnes, would you like to have me go to the picnic with you? Oh, Henry, of course. Well, I'd like to go with you, See that, dear? It didn't take one second. Oh, I'm so glad you can go, Henry. I think I'd better hurry. Uh, do you mind if I walk with you? No. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye, Mother. Goodbye, Mrs. Aldridge. When are you going to eat your lunch? During music. Uh, Henry, uh, look how you across the street. Oh, Henry Aldridge. Oh, gee whiz, Geraldine. Could I see you alone, Henry? I'll wait for you right at the entrance, Henry. Uh, you better go right on in, Agnes. Henry. Well? Henry, Erwin Cooper can't go to the picnic. Would you like to be my partner? I? Be your partner? Of course. Well, gee whiz. Would you? The only thing is... Has someone else asked you? I can fix it, all right. I can fix it. I'm sure I can. Really? Of course. Oh, Henry... Henry, I'm so thrilled you can go. Gee whiz, think how I feel. I'm going with you. <laughs> Boy, I'm going with you. Can you bring the lunch, Henry? I bring it? Oh, I just hate to put up an old lunch. Sure, I I'd be very glad to. Oh, my goodness, we better hurry. Henry! Hey, Henry, I've got a message for you. Come here. What is it, Dizzy? Come here. Could you excuse me, Geraldine? You won't forget, Henry. Forget? How could I? Listen, Henry, let me tell you, boy, you're going to pass right out. Why? I fixed it up for you. You fixed what up for me? To go to the picnic. With who? The girl you said you wanted to meet. <laughs> but I just met her. Oh, no, Henry, that isn't the girl you wanted to meet. I just talked to the one you want. She's crazy to have you go. But, Dizzy, I've already got a date with this one. It's too late to tell the one I've talked to you can't go, Henry. She busted a date purposely. Boy, aren't I your pal? I'll say you're my pal. That makes three girls and one picnic. <laughs> You know, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of Henry's age often say and do a lot of things that puzzle parents. But among the most surprising things about all boys and girls is their strange powers of hearing. Your own son, for instance, may be just upstairs in his room when you call him from the kitchen. Tommy! Oh, Tommy, come down here a minute. Tommy! But no answer, so you call again. And this goes on for several minutes until you finally say to yourself, Well, I did think he might want this extra dish of jello chocolate pudding. But if he doesn't, I'll eat it myself. 
Wait a minute, Mother. Here I am. Where is it? Uh Aha. You see, it just goes to prove that all you have to do is mention just barely whispered Jell-O chocolate pudding, and folks young and old will come a-running. Because seriously, ladies and gentlemen, Jell-O chocolate pudding is a mighty delicious treat. It's a grand, satisfying dessert, delightfully smooth and creamy. And every tempting spoonful is rich with swell, chocolatey flavor. You'll be glad to know, too, that Jell-O chocolate pudding is easy to make and that it costs only a few pennies. So try some real soon. For keen, luscious enjoyment, Jell-O chocolate pudding is in a class by itself. Now, getting back to Henry Aldrich. When we left him, Henry, through no fault of his own, was dated with three girls for the class picnic. Now the scene opens on the morning of the picnic. Henry, wearing an apron, is working in the Aldrich kitchen. Mother, is this all the wax paper we have? Well, Henry, you've already used two rolls. <laughs> but I'm making the sandwiches big. May I ask how big Geraldine's mouth is? <laughs> look, Mother, look at this swell bottle of stuffed olives. Where did you get enough money to buy those? I sold a picture that was up on my wall. Mother, I wonder why Geraldine doesn't like to put up a lunch. What did Agnes say when you told her you couldn't go with her? Very little. Well, Henry, I still don't like it. But don't you think it was all right for me to tell the girl Dizzy fixed up for me that I couldn't go? That was entirely different. Henry, what's become of the portable phonograph that was up in my room? Mary, I meant to speak to you about that. Do you need it today? What's more, I'd like to know what became of that pillow that was up in my room. Well, uh, which one? The Princeton one. Couldn't I borrow that if I take very good care of it? I'm going to rent a canoe, Mary. Why can't you take my Harvard pillow, Henry? Gee whiz, as though I could ask any girl to sit on Harvard. (laughs) Why not, Henry? Well, in the first place, it's coming out at the seams. So Agnes will notice that. Agnes? I'm not going with Agnes. I thought you were. Mary, didn't you tell Agnes? Tell her what? Mary. Mary, the message I gave you. When? When you were going over to her house yesterday. I called downstairs to you. I didn't hear you. But you must have. I said, Mary, will you please tell Agnes I can't take her to the picnic because I have a very urgent engagement. Well, I certainly didn't understand you, Henry. Well, gee whiz, if that doesn't leave Agnes in an embarrassing position. <laughs> Why, Agnes? Why, Agnes? She'll have to eat her lunch alone. Oh, no, she won't, dear. But, Mother, I couldn't take her. You certainly will, dear. But what will Geraldine think? You've known Agnes a great deal longer than you have Geraldine. But, Mother, haven't you caught on? I'm not fond of Agnes. If I take her, I'll be embarrassed the whole afternoon. Mary, could you let me speak to Henry alone, please? Yes, Mother. But I fully disapprove of the whole thing. That's because neither one of you is a boy. (laughs) And what's more, you've never had to take out Agnes. Henry, I realize Geraldine must be a very pretty girl. She's beautiful, Mother. Well, let's grant she's the most beautiful girl that ever lived. But don't you see how Agnes is going to feel? And her mother's always been so nice to you. Oh, don't misunderstand me, Mother. I'm very fond of Agnes's mother. In fact, if it were a choice, I'd rather take her. I'm sorry, dear. I'm not going to say anything more. I see. Does, uh... Does that mean yes or no, Mother? I've said all I'm going to. Henry, Dizzy, is at the front door. Hey, Henry. I'm coming, Diz. Henry, I'm in an emergency. <laughs> What's the matter? You want to buy this knife? I'll let you have it for 50 cents. It isn't worth 50. You try to sell it to me for 50. And if you don't buy it, I won't have any lunch at the picnic. Why not? My girl can't go. She can't, Dizzy? No. It would be your... Listen, Dizzy. If I'll fix you up with one of the swellest girls you ever met in your life, will you give me that knife? Are you kidding me? Do you like fried chicken? Oh. And peanut butter sandwiches? Oh. And deviled eggs? Oh, sure I do. Give me the knife, Dizzy. Here, who is it? Come here while I telephone. Boy, are you in luck. Hello, operator. Gee whiz, what's she like? She's a dream. Yeah? And she's got the swellest mother. Oh. Operator, I want walnut 373. Walnut 373. Now, wait a minute, Henry. Isn't that Agnes's number? Dizzy, her mother can cook. I know, Henry, but I'm not interested. She's 
She's got a lunch basket that's really a laundry hamper. She has? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, operator, the line's busy. Well, will you let me know when it isn't? Boy, am I going to have a swell time with Geraldine. You know what I'm going to do, Dizzy? What? Well, I'm going to rent a canoe. Well, where'd you get the money? I sold a set of books I never read. (laughs) And hey, look at this phonograph. Gee whiz, what did you sell to get that? Oh, nothing. Want to listen to something swell? Ever hear anything like it, Dizzy? I got a pillow from Princeton, too. Yeah? Yeah, I'm going to let Geraldine sit on it. Right in the middle of a canoe. And then you know what I... And then what? Well, you know that cove way over on the far side of the lake? Yeah. Boy, is that a swell place to eat lunch. She was. Hello? <laughs> Henry, look what happened to the record. Hello, Agnes? Agnes, how would you like to have me arrange a very pleasant surprise? How would you enjoy going today with Dizzy Stevens? What does she say, Henry? Oh, no, Agnes, I think you've got the wrong idea of him. What's that? <laughs> oh, no, Agnes, he isn't like that. Hang up, Henry. Henry, to whom are you talking? Agnes, Mrs. Aldridge. Henry, you are not to tell her you can't take her. Yeah, but Mother... Did you hear me? Yes. Hello, Agnes. I'd like to go with you. No, I'd be very glad to. I'll pick you up in about an hour. Goodbye. Henry, could I have my knife? Gee whiz. Am I going to have a swell time? Agnes and Geraldine, both at once... Do you see anyone coming, Agnes? And maybe she changed her mind, Henry. I'm sure Geraldine is coming. She told me she was. Oh, uh, couldn't we get into the canoe here? You know, I've always wanted to go in a canoe. Haven't you ever been in one? No. Can you swim? No, I can't. Is that right? (laughs) Oh, gee, look who's coming down the path. Who is it? Geraldine. Uh, I'll be back in a second, Agnes. Oh, gosh, Henry, why don't you wait here on the dock? I've got to help her carry her sweater. Hello, Henry. Uh, Oh, well, I... So you came, huh? Uh, let Let me carry your sweater for you. Thank you ever so much. Henry, who's that down on the dock? Well, it... Seems, Geraldine, there was a misunderstanding. Henry, that girl isn't going with us, is she? Geraldine, she's just a friend of the family. But I asked you to go. Well, I'm here to go with you. She's really going just for my mother. Hi, Geraldine. Now look. Oh, Erwin Cooper, I thought you couldn't come. I'm here, though. Hi, Henry. Glad to see you, my boy. I'm glad to see you. Oh, we're both glad to see you. Henry! Who's that calling you, Henry? Oh, it's just a girl. Henry! Yes, Agnes! Help me! What's the matter? Oh, Henry, look! She's got one foot on the dock and one foot in the canoe. And she's holding your lunch basket right over the water. Hey, Agnes! Pull your legs together! Lunch basket. Oh, oh, I won't, Henry. 
I'll just squeeze my dress out a little here and there. <laughs> I'll be all right. <laughs> now, look, Agnes, don't you think you ought to go right straight home? No, this sun is awfully warm. We can get in the canoe and it'll be dry by the time we get to the other side of the lake. Where's Geraldine? Oh, there she is. Look, oh. out on the lake with Irwin. She was. They're in a canoe. And they took my lunch basket. Come on, come on, Henry. Get in this canoe with me, huh? Sure. I'll get in. Mm, isn't it lucky you had this crimson pillow for me to sit on? Yeah. Say, did you know your hair has all come down? Oh, I let it down on purpose. Uh, Henry, do you mind if I play this photograph while I lean back in the sun? Well, if you have to. <laughs> Everything has ended up just beautifully. You know, ladies and gentlemen, when folks get to talking about favorite desserts, there's one they never fail to mention, and that's butterscotch pie. Yes, sir, butterscotch pie is a mighty swell treat. And it's marvelously easy and inexpensive to make, too, when you make it with Jell-O butterscotch pudding. Because when you use Jell-O butterscotch pudding for the filling, you do away with all guessing. You save time and effort. And you make certain that every single pie will be a grand success. Furthermore, this rich, taffy-colored pudding gives you a pie filling that's as creamy and satin smooth as can be. And you'll be delighted with its golden butterscotch flavor, its zestful, satisfying goodness. So follow the lead of so many smart, modern housewives. Tomorrow night, treat the family to a luscious butterscotch pie made the easy way with Jell-O butterscotch pudding. Ask your grocer for several packages of this tasty dessert. But be sure to say Jell-O butterscotch pudding. Because only Jell-O butterscotch pudding can give you such rich, mellow enjoyment. <laughs> Mother, but I'm through with them forever. Really, Henry? I've never seen a girl yet that didn't turn out to be a disappointment. Why? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm just hard to please. Oh, uh, could you put some more sunburn lotion on me? I'll ask Mary to. Uh, don't let Mary get near me. She'll put it right where my poison ivy is. <laughs> Family, starring as the stone, is written by Clifford Goldsmith. Original music composed and conducted by Jack Miller. This is Harry Bonsell speaking and wishing you good night for the puddings that are tops in taste. Jell-O pudding. Jell-O pudding.